What's up, everybody? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whatever time it is. I changed up the playlist today, guys. Now we're complaining that it was the same old thing every day. Watch me makes your headache go away. That's good news. Doctor recommended pain reliever. It's always a little bit harder to stream painting hats, so uh, hopefully it works out pretty good. The camera angles are harder to get. Got your wisdom to that. Sit back and relax, man. Joker. Hello from Ireland. Well, hello, Ireland fellow. Ireland and bees. How do you say, like, I'm from Ireland? I'm Ireland. I'm Irelandish. What is the colors here? Purple and green. Purple and green. This is gonna be a good color scheme. Do a little bit of yellow too, because I'm the boss. Irelandish, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Where can you get an airbrush like that? From the interwebs. Um, these are Omni 3000 airbrushes. This is the Badger Omni 3000. They're siphon fed, dual action airbrushes. There's lots of options out there. If you get a good brand like uh, Badger or Iwata, uh, then you'll be good to go. Spray Gunner is a good place to get them. They don't carry the Omnis, which kind of makes me upset, but uh, if you just Google like Omni 3000 airbrush, you'll find some. These are about 80 bucks each. They're kind of expensive. They're well worth it, but uh, they're not free.
hold still. What paint am I using? I'm using Createx paint. The music is a little bit too loud. All right. Two more of these hats, and then I got some shirts to do. This is the black trucker. The word is copper. Blue to light blue fade. Background green. Okay. C O P P E. No, Cooper. <laughs> I said copper. C O O P E R. Cooper. I haven't heard any of the songs on this playlist. I just threw it together right before the stream. I'm digging it so far. Cooper. The R is so big. That's okay. forget to check my DMs. I check my DMs as much as I can, but I get way more messages than I can respond to, my man. Uh, for serious inquiries, I would visit my website, please, where I can email you back professionally 
and all the information is laid out there. There's no way I could respond to all the DMs, man. Cooper. I'm glad I didn't actually write copper, like I said. Because I'm dumb. crazy. In my live stream, showing my face. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I think that's something I should be doing anyway. In my new studio, when I build that, I'm gonna have a mirror on the wall. I used to have a mirror and I would walk up to the wall to like talk about stuff. But I took it down and now I need to put it back up. It's nice to put a face with, with who you're talking to sometimes. It's nice for me, at least, to see who I'm talking to. on a model car um, hypothetically yeah I've never done that but I've seen a lot of people doing it recently and I kind of got inspired to try it it would be good practice for paint on hard surfaces which is what I want to start doing maybe I'll give it a shot um, okay red and orange letters blue and green background that means I start with the lighter color it'll be orange actually yellow in this case D-R-I-G-G-S. Okay. <laughs> 
We got an idea for this one. I'm just gonna do much thinner letters and fill them a little differently and we'll see. From when will you start streaming in your new room? At the end of August is when I move into the new place. Um, we haven't closed on that house yet, we're working on it. And how did I learn like to draw like this? Just practice. It started out as a as a job. I mean, it's still a job, but just practice. I wasn't always good at this. I used to be really bad at airbrushing. I had no sort of lettering skill at all. My handwriting was atrocious, um, but I kept at it. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy graffiti lettering. And ever since I picked up an airbrush, that was definitely the most fun way to draw I've ever experienced. So I knew I wanted to keep doing that. I still got a long way to go. I'm nowhere near where I want to be in the art, um, in my skills. I can control the airbrush pretty well, but I can't. I'm not good at characters. Um, there's a lot more graffiti styles I want to learn. And there's definitely a lot of techniques and backgrounds and styles that I just haven't played with that I would love to be able to do. Where I'm at right now, where I'm trying to go is, I think I'm, I'm making pretty good progress on this path, is to transition from a guy painting t-shirts and hats all day like this, which is still fun, to someone who gets to paint my own artwork. You know, doing murals and stuff and hitting walls and things. And actually get to start playing with my own styles instead of doing client work all the time. So. That'll be fun. I don't like this S. I think that S is pretty lame. I think I can fix it a little bit. I'm gonna add some drop shadow to everything. It's really just been practice and practice and practice. I've painted somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 40 to 50,000 items, shirts and hats and stuff. And each one of those is a new project. I sit down and go, okay, what does the customer want it to say? And I come up with lettering for it. And I've just done it so many times that, you know, that's where all the practice came from. There's no mag magical formula, and there's no special secret trick, it's just practice. Follow people that are inspiring to you, and look at their work, and scroll through your Instagram pages and find stuff that's cool, and take little aspects of it, and try to incorporate it into your work. The S is jacked. The S is super jacked, you're right about that. Um, I wanted to come down like that. I don't know what happened to it. I can't really fix that though. But I do agree with you. It's kind of goofy. If I had, if I thought the customer wouldn't be happy with it, I would definitely redo it, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be stoked with it. Um, just knowing my customers, they're gonna be fine with it. Do I like calligraphy? Calligraphy is great. Um, the script style airbrushing is a lot faster. So I enjoy doing that. 
I think I have a shirt. Maybe I have a couple of shirts to do that style. I did a lot yesterday, calligraphy style. Um, the script, cursive, calligraphy, whatever you want to call it, style is what you learn first, typically, as an airbrush artist. So that's what I started out with. That's definitely what most people order when they're ordering t-shirts. What is the Copic airbrush? The Copic airbrush is just a air hose that, that you attach to the attach to one of the Copic markers. It is not an airbrush. It kind of is an airbrush, like it sprays some ink, but it doesn't. You cannot vary your line width from thick to thin. You can't. You can't do any of this stuff. You cannot do lettering with it. It's not the same thing at all. Um, it's cool. It's cool for like blending colors and making a fade of color behind something, especially if you already have Copic markers and you just want to like add onto those. But it is not a replacement for an airbrush. Do I watch anime? I used to watch a lot of Naruto. Naruto, Naruto. Uh, but no, not, not recently. I don't watch TV in general. I wake up, try to spend some time hanging out with my boy for a while, and I get some emails answered, get my administrative work done, and I come out here and I start painting. And then after I'm done painting, I'm pretty much mentally pooped. And I hang out with the family, make some dinner and all that, and then go, if I have free time, it's spent playing some video games but usually it's spent working on the website working on marketing working on a new video or working on something i don't spend a whole lot of time watching the tv if i do it's with my wife we're just hanging out at the end of the day would i say that i mastered script and graffiti or am i still learning i would say i haven't mastered either of them I would say I'm pretty close to mastering script. Um, I want to add a little bit more style to my script. I want to add some more serifs and flares and whatnot and do a little better of a job, like filling in some of the empty spaces and stuff. I just need to spend another second thinking about it before I start painting a lot of the time. But I'm pretty, I would say like I'm 95% at script. And graffiti styles are something, when I look at other airbrushers, no offense to airbrush artists, but I look at other airbrush artists' graffiti letters, I would say that I'm, I'm ahead of most other people. But when I look at graffiti artists who use spray cans and look at their graffiti letters, I think I got a long way to go. The complexity that they add and the three dimensional effects and stuff that they do. You look at Smo's letters and look at his, his, his 3D and shading, I am nowhere in the vicinity of being able to do something like that that he just does so naturally. Um, so no, in the graffiti world, I would say I've got a long way to go. And I'm looking forward to taking that journey. You should practice wild style, yeah. How much do your time spend painting off camera? Not a whole lot, honestly. Um, because if I can throw a camera on while I'm painting these orders, it's much more enjoyable to sit here and talk to you guys while I do it. Um, but I do spend a good amount of time sketching on my iPad and thinking about styles and stuff. Ouch. I've just been so busy lately that it's been paint as much as I can and then work on everything else that I can and at the end of the day I'm just exhausted and I want to veg out and I don't want to do anything else. What would I do if I haven't been an airbrush artist? Before I was an airbrush artist, I was a web developer. Where did my thing go? I need, I need this. I was a programmer web developer. I've started a lot of game development projects. And if I wasn't, if I didn't have this business and I didn't need to make money right now and get a job right now, I would start a game development project. I would just build a game for fun. Um, but, I don't know. I would probably end up being a tattoo artist or something. What am I doing? I'm doing some more graffiti letters. Purple, gold, and yellow, Louie. Gold and yellow can be on the inside, purple on the outside. I need more paint. L-O-U-I-E. Ouch. 
What's next for me is, I've told her by and stream this before, but it's what I'm thinking about, is this new house, mainly, because I have to build a whole new studio, and i got to put a lot of time into that. And with that is going to be a wall outside to paint on with spray paints. i got a bunch. Um, i got a lot more than that, but I want to start painting some walls, painting large-scale stuff, because I want to do murals, and I want to do the cool stuff. I feel like this is... It's graffiti, but it's not, because, like, it's not the same thing. I want to start hitting up walls so nobody can make fun of me anymore. How long does it take to finish a shirt or hat? Well, I've done three of them during the stream, so... That long. It depends on the shirt. Anywhere between two minutes and... Two hours. <laughs> like, graffiti design, this one should take probably 10, 15 minutes because I'm going to spend more time on it than I normally would because I'm streaming. L-O-U-I-E. A little bit of symmetry. Have I ever had an issue with my airbrush? Every airbrush artist ever has had issues with their airbrushes. If you haven't had an issue with your airbrush, then you haven't taken it out of the box yet. I've got so much muscle memory built up for how I do these letters that I'm like intentionally trying to fight it to deviate from the typical style. It's not really working. I got something to say to you guys. It might be embarrassing. I don't know if I'm supposed to be embarrassed by this or not. I was I played Fortnite last night. Is that? And I had fun doing it. Truth be told, um, I'm frustrated because I don't win any games of Apex, and it makes me sad because I hate not being good at stuff. So I was like, I'm playing a different game. <laughs> And I played Fortnite and I won a bunch. I didn't win any, but I killed a bunch of people. I was like, hey, I can beat these kids. And I had a good time. And then I turned it off and I came outside and I painted a bunch more hats at like midnight. Yeah, Omni is out of stock everywhere. I'm ordering some. They're going to be making me some. I'm ordering a big batch of them to resell soon. Uh, but. Second choice. Everyone's going to say the, Om or the, the Iwata Eclipse. That's a pretty good airbrush. That's what I would go to if I didn't have the Omnis. The No Name Airbrush is great too. That's the one I've been advertising and pushing from Spray Gunner. It's a great airbrush. The only thing I don't like about it is the nozzle system that you have to screw and unscrew the nozzle. Which is just an extra step every time that you have to clean it. Which is not a big deal. It adds like 15 seconds to your to your process, which you don't have to do that often, but that's enough for me to be like, ha, I don't like it.
I'm playing on the PC. What's my life like outside of this? What do you mean life outside of this? This is all I do. Just kidding. Alright. Um, I am part of a church plant. I'm a Christian. You'll figure that out if you haven't already. Um, we are a church plant. And that's pretty much any of my free time goes into that. I need to fill... I already filled up my yellow paint. Never mind. Um, so I... If I'm not painting or like playing, if I'm out doing something, it's usually a fishing or a church, or playing golf. I'm a golfer. I'm not a good golfer, but I'm a golfer. I don't go outside nearly as much as I would, would like to. I don't have a whole... <laughs> whole lot of outside of this life experience, you know? That's what I do most of the time. Sadly. I would love to say I meet up with some bros and we paint walls. Uh, but I don't have any of those. Pretty boring, honestly. You guys get to see the best part. Who inspires me in airbrushing? You also know this if you follow me. I forget everybody's name and every artist that I listen to is name. I just am terrible with the names of people. Um, Nathan McCree is a great artist. He does the biggest murals of anybody that I've seen with airbrushes. So he, he does these giant murals that most people would do with spray paint, and he does it all with airbrushing, which takes so long, but the amount of detail that he puts into everything is crazy. Um, there's a lot of good t-shirt artists out there. Uh, if you follow me and look at who I'm following, you'll see a lot of them. But who inspired me mostly are graffiti artists. Of course, the big ones like Smo and Doke and stuff I talk about. But uh, 1000 is a big inspiration, mostly because of how he's made a living around his videos and all of that. Um, with a family and with a, with a kid and all of that. Do I do work for celebrities? I have done work for celebrities. I've worked... The first celebrity I worked with was Hulk... <laughs> Hulk Hogan way back in the day. Um, I made a bunch of shorts for him in his wrestling deal career thing. Um, I painted for, I've got an order right now for an NFL player. I'm doing a batch of shirts for a TV or for a movie crew, a movie cast. I'm not allowed to tell you who that is. And a bunch of Instagram influencers that I've worked with for with millions of followers and stuff. But, uh... No one has really... I don't... Working with celebrities is cool for me because it's like, hey, I work with a celebrity. But they don't ever seem to appreciate me. I haven't found one that's like cares at all about who I am. It's just, it seems like I'm just the first shop they came to and they asked for something and they walked away. So it's like, it doesn't matter that they, they didn't come to me because I was cool. They came to me because I needed a shirt and then they left, which is fine, whatever. It almost doesn't count though. Floating music notes, you say? I think I did the trouble cliff backwards. I need to, what do I need to do? Oh, I forgot the bricks. I, I knew there was something.
the coolest job contact request thing I've gotten in a while, I think, is a preliminary invite to Brazil for some sort of airbrushing, not airbrushing, but like graffiti wall type of government funded, I don't know anything about it, but I know that some places host like graffiti parties and they like invite all these graffiti artists out to paint walls and stuff together and they're saying like sometime 2022 that they're having another one and they were like, "We're you're invited and I was like, that's pretty cool. I don't know how to paint walls yet, but I'll figure it out. Who do I play with on Apex? Uh, nobody, because I'm lame. I don't have, uh, I don't hang out with very many people, guys. That's the wrong airbrush. This is the right one. My compressor, if someone's asking, is outside behind the wall. It lives outside so you don't hear it. You're welcome. I used to live inside with me, and I would have to stop talking every time the compressor turned on because there's no way you'd hear what I was saying. asking if you have more control with two hands. I have used two hands because it gives me more control. I can paint with one, but that gives me, it's like shooting a gun. You don't just shoot up in the air. You put your other hand on it and you shoot together. Now, I'm not squeezing the bottle. I'm using it as a handle just to balance it. Um, because yeah, you don't paint with your wrist. Notice my wrist isn't doing this ever. I'm not painting like this. I'm using my whole arms to move my whole upper body to paint. And that's where all your control comes from. Some more graffiti. Corky Fresh. What? <laughs> what phone do I use? This is the Galaxy S20, I think. It's my work phone. I just use it as a camera. I use a Pixel as my regular phone. Um, black and purple with the skyline. Okay. What am I doing? I want to use the light purple. Sorry, I'm giving you guys whiplash. Corky Fresh.
I don't know about that. F R E S H. We got letters leaning this way, and then we got letters leaning this way. That's kind of goofy. Somebody's asking about the shirt boards I'm using. Um, I'm sure you can find somewhere to buy them, but I made them all myself. They're just cut out of pieces of plywood. I use pressed hardboard as the wood. There's plenty of things you can use. I've used masonite before. Um, you just want something that's not going to splinter. Just go to a hardware store, find something cheap. Mine are super thin. They're not thick. They don't need to be thick at all. I have three sizes of mine, three main sizes. I've got smaller and other sizes too, but I've got one that fits a small t-shirt nice and snugly, one that fits a medium t-shirt nice and snugly, and then one that fits a large t-shirt nice and snugly. Um, and then shirts bigger than that just go on the large board. And usually they're fine, and I can clip them if I need to on the corners. And uh, that's all you need. You don't need a bunch of sizes. You could just get away with one size, or you just use a small one for everything. Talking about making mistakes. What makes you think I make mistakes? My drink matches my shirt. Matches better when I look down the cup. Um, the corky words, Jack. You'll see. It's fine. Um, no, I make mistakes a lot. I made a mistake earlier. Usually I can cover it up. Usually I can just fix it as I go. But, in 
occasionally I make mistakes that can't be fixed and I gotta start over. More often than not, that mistake is in the form of a spelling error. And those happen pretty quick, so I can just start over without wasting too much time. The shirts are cheap. The shirts are like two, three bucks, so. That's okay. It's really just a matter of time. Is tragic. The Y is pretty bad. It's not bad, it's just not great. It's not that bad. You're being mean! It's fine. I'm gonna play with some line weights because we got some thin lines, we got some thick lines, and we got some inconsistencies. I do my S's like scene. I have noticed his S's. I like, that's what I meant to do with. One of these, that's just this guy, this goofy one I did over here was kind of weird. I meant for it to be more like folded, I don't know. I make mistakes, okay? I make mistakes like everybody else does. Let's start by thickening all the outside lines. Look, these are quick shirts. I'm not starting with the sketch. I'm getting them done as fast as I can. Words I've never written before. Letter combinations that are unique every single time. Um, I'm trying to get them done in 15 minutes or so, not an hour and a half. They're not all gonna be absolutely perfect. There's a, there's a old adage that they say when you're trying to get good at something. And yeah, obviously you practice and you practice, but you're not practicing to raise your ceiling, your skill ceiling, to raise the best you could do. You're practicing to raise your floor so that your bottom level quickest sketch ever is still better than, you know, your old good one. So obviously I could spend two hours on this thing and make it perfect and make it awesome and add a million details and shape the letters perfectly before I even started the lines and whatnot, but that's not the application here. The application is to get it done quickly, but still make it awesome. Or relatively okay. You know what I'm trying to say. This is a $35 t-shirt, not a $200 t-shirt. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, Y is definitely a letter I need to work on. Um, what are some other letters? I don't like my O's. I got real boring with this. Oh, it's just a bag on circle, but. Um, F's are kind of goofy. A lot of my letters need some work. They need a, some style updates. Um, all these little tiny inside holes, I'm just gonna kind of darken. They add more confusion than anything else when I leave them. Everything gets more legible when I kind of cover up those holes. That'll be okay. Alright, skyline. They wanted a skyline. Let's just build some generic buildings up here. With the camera in the right spot. The usual thing to do is a silhouette, um, but I don't want to do a silhouette because then I have to fill them in completely, and I don't like to do that. So instead, I'm going to pick a lighting direction. Uh, the smaller sides are going to be darker. Fade up to the top. And then check this out. Fade from the top down on the other side. Buildings. And I'll do like a skyline behind it, like a, um, uh, what am I trying to say, a sunset type of night sky scene. Court, you're fresh. Thank you for the support. Appreciate it, man. Hey, Brent. Oh, I bought a badge. Badges are like tips. They're like if you walk by a dude on the subway, like, dancing or something, and you threw, threw a dollar in his hat. That's what a badge is. They're not like a mainstream Instagram feature yet, so a lot of people ask, like, what the heck is a badge? Well, it's like a tip. It helps me make more videos and spend less time painting t-shirts. The more external income I can get, the more of these orders I can send out to my other artists, and I can work on, like, classes and videos and other things. But right now, this is my only form of income, guys, so I'm doing this as much as I can. The Forbidden Guru, thank you, friend. Did I take art in school? No. Um, I did. Well, I, in high school I did. We used to do like still lifes and stuff. Not to brag, but I like won my art show in high school. And stuff. Uh, but I didn't go to college for art. I tried to. They didn't let me. They said, you're not a good enough artist. So I said, Humph, fine. I'll go start my own business. I did. So many of these designs have a boombox on the bottom because that's what's pictured in the design, so they ask for it. This boombox is all over the place. What in tarnation?
I guess it gets the same sketchy style as a Lotus game. Thank you for buying the badge again, man. Awesome. If it wasn't for the support you guys get, I would still just be painting t-shirts all day long in a mall. I still pretty much paint t-shirts all day long, but... I feel better about it. There's no... There is drips. Never mind. I try to be here on on here every day, as much as I can. Anytime I got a bunch of orders lined up ready to paint, I say, well, I know people like to see it, so I will turn on the camera and do it. Until you guys stop watching, I'll be here. Or maybe I'll die. I don't know. Something will happen. For the foreseeable future, I'll be here. What colors are this? Black and purple. Good. Pretty much just gonna paint this solid fuchsia and then shade it. My favorite part about airbrush paint is look at this, I can just paint right over those outlines. It's almost like I get to start a new layer on a digital graphic and just paint underneath the outlines. So sweet. And that's the reason my outlines are almost always black, as opposed to a different color. Do the other artists that I have have Instagram? Some of them do. Um, they don't post a lot, I've noticed. These are old guys that have, they're not old, <laughs> to offend my artists. These are guys that have been doing this for a very long time. Many airbrush artists that I've worked with and that I've talked to have been painting for longer than I've been alive. And, I don't know, they just don't have interest in posting stuff. It's a lot of work. I spend a lot of time editing videos and posting things and... I mean, obviously you can just take a picture, but if you just post still pictures of your work over and over again, that's not going to gain any traction. It's kind of hard to keep up the quality that's necessary in order to continue to gain traction. And they just don't have time for that. They got families there doing their own thing on their own time, and they're kind of content just painting. Um, but when they do, if they do start gaining some traction, and one or two of them are starting to to do that, then yeah, I'll post them and share their work. The Airbrush Customs Instagram page that I have, um, I've, it's linked to from my profile. That is where I'll post everybody's work. Dale's me, Dale will just be, I'll paint my own stuff and I'll post my own stuff, but Airbrush Customs will be all my artists, um, and I'll share other people's artwork and stuff. It'll be like an Airbrush page, not a, not a Dale page. So that's where that'll be. Eventually, I'll stop painting t-shirts on stream one, one of these days, maybe, because I'll be doing murals and stuff and everything else. 
but the airbrush customs page will be like the business front of all of that. And then I'll be like a, an artist. Where do I live? I live in Virginia in the USA. When I paint on walls, I'll do my outlines last. Yes, absolutely. This is an airbrush only opportunity. Sometimes I'll practice um, painting shirts as if it was a wall, doing it in the proper order, with the fills first and the first lines and the sketches and all of that. I'm aware of the process and I've done a couple walls. One wall a couple times and a, a plywood sheet in my backyard a couple times and like I've done it. Uh, just not nearly as much as I've done airbrushing. It's not the spray can that's the problem. It's not the, it's not the order of operations. It's not the can. It's the scale. From me painting here where I can reach everything like this and see it all to now painting an entire wall is that's the that's the big transition. Visualizing things is much harder on a giant wall. And especially when I'm used to putting this much attention to detail into everything and the lines exactly where I want them and my outlines and highlights precisely where they're supposed to go, like this would be a very hard thing to do on a wall with a spray can. So when I sit there and I try to do it, I get a little frustrated that it's not going exactly where I want it to go. Same thing I tell everybody else. Practice, practice, practice. It'll work. I'll get it. I just haven't had much time to practice it. What is this color called? This is fluorescent raspberry. This is just violet. This is just Createx is white. I think my music stopped. Let me add some highlights to this skyline real quick. Work you fresh. I think that'll be good. Okay, let's start my music back up. The right consistency for the paint someone's asking is the consistency that that paint flows nice and smoothly. I usually put about 10 to 20 percent reducer into my paint. Um, it's not a visual thing for me. I'm not looking at the paint and like measuring its consistency. I'm just measuring, just looking at how well it flows. If it flows well, then it's good. If it's not flowing well and I know my airbrush is nice and clean, then I need to reduce my paint some more until it starts working properly. Does the paint dry instantly? No, but it does dry pretty quick. Um, if I push hard on this, maybe not. Here, I don't know if you can see that. It's I can get some purple paint on my finger if I wanted to, but it's pretty much dry. That's completely dry. All those are dry. Red and green. Okay, two colors that work together but don't blend together. I need to pick which color goes inside, which color goes outside. Someone else bought a badge. Thank you guys. Every one of those counts, man. It makes a big deal. Somebody already bought me coffee for the next three days right here. M-A-R-I, M-A-R-I in one line. I don't like when people put a lot of text in one line unnecessarily. Nag nab it. I could bother everybody a whole lot and use like a lowercase a 
here instead. <laughs> I would get hate mail and then, like, physical people would write me letters if I did that. See, this is the exact same M that I do every time. They all look the same. I'm trying to break free from that. But when I'm trying to paint quickly, it just always comes back to the same, same old thing. Someone's asking how to vary the line thickness. We're gonna do a quick little tutorial. Um, give me some white paint so I can work on this board over here. I got a voice I can narrate a book. That'd be cool. All right, I don't believe you, but you'd be two years ago. You would never hear me talking at all. I was super mumbly. Um, let's look. So there's two parts, two main ways to control the airbrush. There's no pressure. You don't change the pressure. Pushing down the button. That's pressure, it's on or off. But the farther back you pull the trigger, the more paint that comes out. You can pull back a little bit and get these little dots, or pull back a lot and get big dots. And the other way to control the line thickness is how close you are to the surface. If I pull back a little bit, I'm gonna pull back the same amount each time. And I'm way back here, obviously it's faded and small. The closer I get, even though I'm not pulling back anymore, or less, you get smaller lines. So it's a combination of controlling the amount of pulling back on the trigger with how close you are to the shirt. And that gives you the ability to make all of these motions. And the first thing you learn when you get an airbrush is getting comfortable with that a little bit and then you're gonna wanna make a bunch of these little tiny dots as small as you can with these dots. That means that you know right where that clutch point is if you're used to driving like a manual car alone where the clutch catches the car uh, you know where the trigger is going to start pulling back to make paint come and you make these tiny dots and that that's good practice there and then you want to start making these dagger strokes where you push forward on your trigger as you get close to the surface to get these nice pointed lines and you see me use these every single stroke that I do is a dagger stroke it ends in a taper like this when I'm doing the outside of a letter it's always going to end in a taper everything I do ends in a taper um, all the stars 
has four dagger strokes and then a big dot in the middle. A palm tree, if you see me do those, is just a bunch of those dagger strokes over and over. Everything's dagger strokes. Um, but distance of your trigger and distance from the board are the only variables you have control over, really. You can change the pressure, but that's not something that you do while you paint. Um, other than that, it's just muscle memory. I, well, I guess there's another variable, it's how fast you're moving. If you move slowly, then obviously more paint's building up. If you move quickly, uh, less paint is gonna build up, but that's not gonna change the size of your spray pattern, and it's not gonna change the sharpness of your line. Those things are set by the amount you pull back in the distance. When you're painting with a spray can, obviously you don't have any control over how much paint's coming out other than changing your cap. Uh, you only have a control over how far away you are from the surface. So airbrushing gives you that extra variable. I don't have to change caps and stuff. I get to change uh, the line weight on the fly. Even right now when I'm doing this, I'm doing a bunch of dagger strokes. I'm fading up and then I'm fading out and I'm keeping the air down while I'm painting and I'm just fading turning on paint, turning off paint as I'm going up and down. That's just muscle memory that I can do it that fast, but it gives you a nice smooth feel. What's going on? Thanks for joining the video says he's new to the page welcome I always love to throw a little bit of yellow next to my green what I'm doing here is I'm pulling back on this chuck nut um, pulling back on this will pull back the needle farther than the trigger itself will so you can get a little bit more paint by doing this which helps you get a clog out or helps you lay down paint a little faster than the trigger itself will let you. That was a cool little trick. It's harder to control, but it works the same way. You can even get the same dagger strokes with it just by pulling back and then letting it go slowly. It's like a boost for an airbrush. When did I start graffiti? I started airbrushing like 13 years ago. Um, I started doing graffiti style lettering, or at least my, my lettering started to look more like stylistic letters three or four years ago. Um, and now I'm only the last two or three years have I intentionally decided I'm going to start doing what I call graffiti art and like building stylistic letters just for fun. But. Many people, and I, I understand why I don't call what I'm doing graffiti, because it's not illegal, it's not spray cans, it's not big on a wall. I understand that like there's a lot of differences between this and typical graffiti, and I get it when people are saying that this isn't graffiti, that's fine. Um, but I do plan on being or doing legitimate large-scale spray can graffiti. Probably not a whole lot of vandalism, but uh, that style of artwork regardless. There's a big difference. I talked about this yesterday. I don't need to go in depth about it, but a big difference between just destructive vandalism and tactful artwork. Um, tactful, unauthorized artwork. Um, I'm not a fan of you just writing your name big on the side of something just because you think your name is cool. But if you put some style into it and you put it in a reasonable place, that it will be appreciated more than it will be disgusted at by individuals. Uh, there's a difference there. I've not done any of that, but I'm not opposed to it.
They said they want the shirt full. Okay. I'll add some more hearts down there. I'm not just going to fill the thing with color. That would take forever. And be messy. Notice with these hearts, the same thing with my letters, that they all kind of have a, a direction. And they're going some consistency here. Con little things like that. Consistency that you might not consciously re uh, recognize is what helps bring your designs together. Because your brain kind of goes, oh, this all has a cohesive feel to it. Why? I don't even know. Well, it's because things are parallel or they're slanted in a, a certain way. As a designer, as a graffiti artist or any other kind of designer, you need to think about ways to draw your viewers' eyes to the parts of the design that you want them to and uh, kind of know what it is they're looking at before they even consciously realize it sometimes. Artwork is a form of communication, and maybe it's not so relevant to letters, it is in some ways, but when it comes to illustrating other things, you are in the simplest form trying to communicate to your viewer what it is they're looking at. If you're trying to draw a picture of a squirrel, you need to find the recognizable parts of a squirrel and be like, yo, that's a squirrel, so that they instantly go, that's a squirrel, and then they get to appreciate the detail and the style that you put into that. Um, same thing with letters. They need to recognize those letters. For my customers, they need to recognize those letters and it needs to be legible. And then they can kind of appreciate it. Sometimes when it comes into graffiti, it kind of blurs that line where it takes a second to read what it is I'm writing, and that's okay. But for the most part, especially if it was something like cursive lettering, uh, legibility is a super important part of everything. Thank you for buying those badges when I see that. It's a cool form of art. Airbrushing is a cool form of art. There's so much you can do with it. It doesn't have to just be lame t-shirts like the ones I paint. Uh, you can do really cool illustration and murals and graffiti and stuff with it, like on walls. And let me go over here. That's what I'm here for. I'm trying to teach people how to use this tool so that people can do it. All right, here's a nice script one, a cursive style one. All I've done so far is graffiti today. Here's a simple one. Black text on a pink background. Panarchy, what? I thought it said pancake. First, P-A-N-A-R-C-H-Y. Is it the same as saying background versus outline when ordering a shirt? It depends on the graphic you're talking about. Um, I read them all, so if you're clear about what you're saying, then I'm going to figure it out and I'll probably understand what you're saying. If it's a script style design, I would call this the outline. Um, if you said it was a background, this person said background, um, it's the same thing. They're all read by me. I've been doing this for a while. I usually understand what you're looking for. On the checkout page, if you are ordering a shirt right now, on the checkout page, uh, there's plenty of room that you can elaborate. There's a notes field. You can talk about whatever you want to. And, uh,
And if it seems unclear and I can't, I don't understand it, then I'll send you an email and we'll talk about it. Thank you for your, whoop, bye. Your interest in placing an order with me today. Excuse me, Louie. Thank you. Come on. Two more. One, two, buckle my shoe. Some three letter words. Blue and red text. We're gonna do blue text with red background. F A U. These are drippy letters. We're gonna make some melty cool letters. That's what we're gonna do. You can't stop me, I'm in charge. Um, I wanna use a lowercase a, but. A lot more people than I would expect complain about the capitalization of the letters. When I use graffiti style, I assume that like, there is no case sensitivity. Right, an uppercase A is the same as a lowercase A, it doesn't matter. But my customers seem to like get upset if I don't use the right one that they used. So don't wanna bother anybody today. How can you start airbrushing? First, you have to buy an airbrush. Um, I think I have links in my bio to airbrushes. I might have took them down for a minute. Um, but if not, I'll put them back up soon. You need to buy an airbrush, of course, and then you need to learn how to use it. And there are YouTube videos to teach you how to use it. There is my live streams to teach you how to use it a little bit. And I have classes coming out to teach you how to use it. And that's going to be the most uh, complete way of learning how to airbrush, at least in the style that I airbrush. I can give you a quick rundown on how to use the thing, and I'm going to. I'm going to make just regular YouTube videos on that. But troubleshooting and developing muscle memory and learning some techniques and practice drills and all the little issues that you're going to run into. The best way to learn that is just a little bit of one-on-one -on -one help. Um, and I'll be offering that soon. This one, I'll do the fills next. Green and yellow. Hmm. 
Man, my wrist hurts. USF. Same design. It's going to be drippy. turned off my air conditioning before I started the stream. It's like 79,000 degrees in here. What will the cost of my classes be? I'm not sure. I pretty sh I think it's $200. I think it's $200. Don't quote me. Um, it's, I'm not the... I'm working with class camp to create these classes and I'm not the final say on some of those details. Because they need to make a cut too. And, you know, all of that business crap and whatnot, but uh, I think $200 is what we decided. And it'll be like a four week class. It's a month long class. You're not, it's not a quick skimpy thing. It's a full thing. And at the end of it, you should be able to like start a business, you know, like you should know enough to be comfortable airbrushing. I'm going to teach in this class everything that I was taught. I forgot to do the drips on this one like that one. Um, everything that I was taught in training at King's Dominion when I started airbrushing at the theme park. So like, the several weeks of learning that I went through is what I'm going to be teaching on this class. My own, my own version of it, but same thing. <laughs> I missed some comments. Let me read some of these real quick. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of comments like that and saying that like people getting stuck watching this I don't I'm super glad and stoked that this is entertaining to everybody <laughs> but um, feel free to like do other stuff with your day too you know I'm honored that you want to spend your time here I don't know why it's so mesmerizing I agree though, I go back and I look at my videos, especially the old ones that I don't remember, and I'm like, man, that's really fun to watch. And I watch other artists do the same thing, and other airbrush and graffiti artists. It's just something about line work, watching lines come together for me, is just super entertaining. It's really cool. I'm gonna have to do a couple layers of green on top of this. Matter of fact, I should just dry it and do a couple layers of white instead. that wasn't loud. Have I ever done 3D with the airbrush? Yeah, not as much as I want to. I need to sit aside some time and do a personal project and start with a sketch and really play with some 3D. I do drop shadows and sometimes I'll do like a 3D drop shadow. Did I do one? That's not, it doesn't really count, right? But uh, it doesn't count at all. But I do some 3D stuff. I just haven't, that's one of the parts of it the graffiti letters that I would like to get better at. 
so that's something that I'm going to be practicing. Um, it takes a simple design like this and makes it take way, way, way longer. So it's not something that I've been able to put a lot of practice into from my business because I can't spend that kind of time on a t-shirt or I would have to charge far more than I do. But as I've been more and more interested in graffiti and lettering and all of that, it's uh, definitely what I want to be comfortable with. Before I do, did any kind of lettering and stuff, I, was a, I wasn't an architect, I was not a profession, but I thought that I was going to be an architect, I like to draw buildings and technical things, so I understand shading very well. Um, and I could make these letters look 3D, like blocks, no problem, but to get like an artistic 3D to them, I don't know. make them look like I want to and have the level of depth that I want to have, I'll have to sit down and play with them for a while. Like I said before, I never come to the shirt with a sketch first. It just comes from the initial, I'll walk up to it and look at the wind voice and go, okay, I'm writing this word. And here we go. It's always new combinations of letters and things, so it's not, not like I'm familiar with when I'm writing, so I get to play with it the same way over and over. The big part about graffiti is the interaction between letters. You know, if you get different letters every time, then you don't get to... Obviously, I've written these combinations of letters all over the place all the time, and I know how to get two or three letters together, but a whole word, it's not something I write every day. I need to clean this green airbrush, it's not pulling out very slow. This is all the way back, this is a max blast, that's all the green is coming out. I mean, there's a clog up in here. Or my paint's too thick, or actually maybe just my air hole is clogged. This might be it. It's a lot better. It's not 100% of the problem. How can I share your work with my country? Well, um, I don't know. There's a share button. Like you can literally just show it to people. Of course. If you're talking about like buying t-shirts, I do offer international shipping, but international shipping is so slow and expensive that I hate I hate doing it. You know, I hate charging anybody more to ship the thing than the actual shirt costs. I think it's dumb. So I'm looking at alternatives. Obviously I can do digital work, or I can even do airbrush work on paper and then just send you a picture, but that seems kind of lame too. Maybe just videos. You could order a artwork done and I'll take a video of it and send you the video. Is that cool? Would that be cool? Would that be good for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where am I from? I'm from the United States of A. Um, green and yellow. This is the last shirt, guys. I'm done with what I've got set aside for today. So when I finish this up, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fix my airbrush first. Can the air hole on the bottle affect the art? It can, in a way. Just like that green one that I just fixed, the air hole being clogged right here 
As paint leaves this bottle through the front of the airbrush, air needs to replace that paint, otherwise you're going to create a vacuum in this bottle. And the stronger that vacuum is, the harder of a time the airbrush is going to have pulling that paint out of it, to the point where paint's not coming out at all anymore because the vacuum's too strong. Uh, to prevent that vacuum, you got to make sure your air hole is clear. So I'm poking that needle through like I do. When I shake it, I poke that needle through to prevent paint from coming out, and when I pull that needle out, I know the air hole is clean now and that makes sure everything is nice and operating smoothly. So yeah, if you don't unclog that air hole, then eventually, halfway through a shirt or so, you're gonna be like, why is my paint flowing real slowly? And it's because your thing is clogged. That's another reason why I only fill up the bottles about halfway, because the way for this get clog is for paint to get up in there while you're painting and moving it around and then it gets stuck there and dries. If you fill it up halfway and you're careful, it never really reaches up there. It's not a big problem though. At the beginning of every, every day, I take my important colors like black and white and the first thing I do is shove this in there and give it a quick shake and again that cleaned the air hole out and then I'm good. because. You want to shake your paint, and that kills two stones with one bird, or whatever the thing is supposed to be. Get two birds stoned at once, or something. I forget how it goes. But. If anybody's got any final questions, now is the time. I'm gonna get off of here in just a second. Uh, thanks for the support today. A good amount of badges today. Seven whole dollars. I'm not being sarcastic, that's a lot um, for support on a video. Thank you guys. Um, I know that doesn't seem like a whole lot of money, but that little bit helps me to you know, at least have the encouragement and motivation that says, hey, they care, this is important, let me make some some educational videos, I still haven't done good at doing that, but seeing your comments, reading your comments, looking at the feedback and looking at the support is, I don't know how to describe how much it impacts my day and means to me, uh, thank you guys. Those classes are coming out soon. I'm terrible and I still don't have any information for you on them. I can't take all the blame though. I haven't been given any information on them either. Other news I guess I hit on earlier is that I will be opening up my airbrush supply shop again later. Uh, once I move, after I move, I'll have plenty of room for inventory and stuff and I'll be selling these Omnis again the whole kit and everything and I'll probably work out a deal so like if you buy an airbrush kit from me then you'll get a good discount on the classes or something like that we'll figure it out um but other than that guys thanks for hanging out yes I'll have classes I have some videos I'll make more videos glad you guys enjoy watching I enjoy painting with you guys it's much more fun to do it with you guys than to do it by myself um this one was fun, I like the city on this. Let's do some stars. They got a flash light or something, I don't know. But, thanks guys, I'll see you next time. I love you, bye.